Do you need antifreeze if you live where it doesn't freeze? Don't think you're too cool for coolant. You're about to learn some important facts about your car's cooling system. Combustion generally generates a lot of heat, and internal combustion engines have combustion as part of their name. They make a lot of heat. We used to just use air to get rid of that heat. There was no point in creating some fancy cooling system if the air around you was able to get rid of the heat for you. That was fine for a while, but we started making more powerful engines because of course we did, and that more powerful engine creates more heat. We had to have more efficient ways to get rid of that heat. The problem with air is that it's a gas, and gas molecules are far apart. Liquid though, that has molecules that are close together. Now solids, they're even closer together, but solids don't move very well, so you can't get them to flow very easily. Liquids, on the other hand, they flow pretty well, so we were able to make a system that moves liquid from the engine that's generating all that heat to a radiator that's out in the air, has a lot of surface area, and can transfer that heat very efficiently. So let's take water. It's pretty common and not too flammable, so it seems like a pretty ideal candidate for coolant. And it could work, but we're working with a liquid, and heat can turn a liquid into gas. So if water gets up to 212 degrees Fahrenheit and starts to boil at atmospheric pressure, you end up with a gas instead of liquid. And if we could get by with a gas, then you wouldn't have to pour anything at all into your radiator. You'd be fine with running air. But obviously we can't do that. So having water boil, that's a bad time. You may notice a specific detail that I added there, at atmospheric pressure. The important thing is when you heat water up, it expands. And if it's inside a sealed container that it can't expand in, then pressure builds up. And as pressure builds up, the boiling point will go up as well. So you can bump up that 212 degrees Fahrenheit a bit, but it's still not enough. Another issue is that water has this weird quirk of when it freezes, instead of getting smaller, it actually expands. When your car is sitting outside in the freezing cold in the middle of the night, that water is turning to ice inside the block and most likely is going to crack it. There's freeze plugs that can kind of counteract that a bit, but you can't count on them to for sure save your engine. And once the engine block is cracked, it's done. So we've seen that water has a boiling temperature and a freezing temperature. What if we could take that freezing temperature and make it even lower, and that boiling temperature and make that even higher? Well, if we use some ethylene glycol in the mix, we can actually do that. Ethylene glycol is a common base ingredient in a lot of coolants. If you take a typical ethylene glycol coolant, mix it 50-50 with water, you end up with a much lower freezing point and a much higher boiling point. Combine that with your cooling system operating pressure, which is typically regulated by your radiator cap, usually around 16 PSI, and you have a great system for managing heat in your engine without the drawbacks of it freezing. And so far, we've pretty much only talked about system pressure and temperature. Coolant also serves as lubricant for the water pump, which typically can't get lubricant any other way. A lot of coolants also have a small amount of leak sealing chemical in them, which is meant to just seal up the smallest of pinhole leaks. It'll usually take the form of this weird toothpaste looking substance that comes out of where the leak would be. So unless you're building some specialty vehicle and you know what you're doing, don't use straight water in your cooling system. Use a mix of antifreeze and water, and also make sure that you get the right antifreeze for your car. Just because it says all makes all models doesn't mean that you can mix those coolants. It doesn't lie when it says all makes all models, you just have to pour out all the old coolant that's in there already and use the all makes all models coolant. Otherwise, use the same coolants you have in your car already. Thanks for watching, consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next Car Simplified video.